Hey, what's going on, kings and queens? Welcome to a glorious king. Um, as promised, I'm going to teach you guys how to incorporate God's word in your prayer time. And the reason why we want to incorporate God's word when we pray, um, not only because it makes our prayers invincible, but God's word is a weapon. It's written. The word of God is quick and powerful, and it's sharper than any double-edged sword. It goes down into the body, dividing soul and spirit, even into the bone marrow, discerning the thoughts and the heart of men. Like God's word is extremely, extremely powerful. Just imagine when you use God's word in prayer, what it does to the kingdom of darkness. It's like a nuclear bomb. Another reason why we use God's word when we pray is because it firms us. We know that it's written, the scripture cannot be broken. So if God's word can't be broken, then we know that whatever his word says, it surely will happen. And again, he says that let God be true and every man a liar. And again, God is not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he should repent. So we know that because God can't lie, we know that everything that he says in his word concerning your business, your marriage, your finances, your health, whatever it is that you're in prayer, for is already done just as it is written my promises are yes and amen when you know what God says you know what he didn't say and therefore it makes it nearly impossible for Satan to have a hold on you or to try to deceive you when you're in prayer don't think that when you're praying the devil's not resisting you it's even written submit to God and resist the devil and then he will flee Satan's going to try to resist you in prayer because his angle is to make sure that you don't pray his angle is to make sure that you are discouraged you're defeated that you are disheartened and that you won't even try or even last in prayer and go against them because you're being resisted so much. He'll try to throw thoughts at you, thoughts of the past, discouragement. Oh, you're not going to go anywhere. This is not going to do anything to me. You're powerless. Nothing's going to change. He'll do everything he can to try to derail you from prayer. So it's important that when you recite God's word in your prayer time, it reminds you of what God said. And when you're reminded of what God said, you know that God surely will do the thing that you're praying about because he's not a liar. For instance, if I'm battling sickness in my body and I'm feeling pain in my body and I'm in prayer and as I'm praying, I recite the word that says that by your stripes, I was healed. I now know God's mind for me. I know and am confident that God wants me healed and that this sickness or pain in my body that I'm battling is a violation to his word. And so it amps me all the more to pray even harder because I know that my God wants me free. Now, if you don't incorporate God's word, not that you won't get free, but it makes it a lot harder if the devil comes at you and begins to throw thoughts of your past or how you were never healed before and that you're still battling this for 20 years or that every time you prayed, nothing changed. So what makes you think it's going to change now? When you use God's word, when you recite God's word in your prayer time, it blows those lies out of the water and therefore it breaks you through to grab a hold of your healing. Well, kings and queens, this concludes part two. Stay tuned for part three, where I'm going to show you how I prepare for prayer and what things I do to make sure that I'm leaving prayer with victory and real breakthrough. So I love you guys so much. If you haven't, please like, share, and subscribe to the channel. Um, and I look forward to seeing you guys on the next one. God bless you, and you guys have an amazing day. All right. I'm about my father business. I'm about my father business. I'm about my father business.